Hello everyone and welcome back to another True Crime Tuesday. Yes, this video is soft spoken. <laughs> I know, gonna get a lot of hate for that, but um, it was requested of me to do a soft spoken one and you know, every now and then I like to change it up, so. Before I start with this video, there's a few things I need to say about it. So, one, I lost my recording room because my parents are staying here, so I'm using natural lighting. It's very bright outside, so I can already see that I'm partly in the sun, so it may not be the best lighting. Um, I also, they know I'm recording, and they try to be quiet, but they never really know exactly how loud they are. I can hear my mom roaming around in the kitchen, and that's probably gonna, you know, I'm probably gonna hear that in my room, so sorry if there's gonna be some background noise. Um, also, I get a lot of hate for these true crime videos. I get a lot of people calling me a sick person for combining ASMR with true crime and like using it to tell a person's sad story. Um, or I just get hate for, for doing, like telling a person's story. Um, I know I'm not alone in that. I know that actual true crime YouTubers get a lot of the same hate. Um, and they always say, you know, oh, I'm telling these stories because if I can reach anyone that, you know, can maybe help solve this case, that's not why I'm doing it. I know that a lot of the cases I talk about are probably never going to get solved. The reason I do it is because I just think those people deserve to have their story told so they're not forgotten and so that maybe if the case doesn't get solved, at least people know that this happened to them. Now, for today, I am doing a case because I hope it can help. I know that my audience is still very small and there's probably a very slim chance, but I want to do that anyway, so I'm probably going to do two cases today because I don't think that either of them is long enough to cover a whole video. Um, the first case is a current missing person. He's a Belgian guy that is missing in Australia and that's why I want to cover it because he's Belgian and it's like all in the news has been for a few weeks and I just want to get his story out there and see if, you know, maybe something can be helped. And then the second case is also a Belgian case that is actually solved, but it has been, it also happened very recent and it made me so mad and I just want to tell that story. With that being said, let's get into this case. So the first case I'm going to be talking about is the disappearance of Teo Haye. Now, Teo uh, was 18 years old when he went missing on May 31st of 2019 in Byron Bay, Australia. He was originally from Brussels in Belgium, and he just finished um, high school in Auderheim. Now, he decided to go on an eight-month backpacking trip through Australia <clears throat> before starting with university next year uh, to get his bachelor in science and mathematics. Now, his mother describes him as, a, as a, him as a very conscientious and mature boy. Um, she said that he thought really well about doing this traveling. He planned his gap year well in advance. He organized each moment of the trip in advance, booking transport and accommodation. Like, he wasn't just going to go there and find a hotel that was free and go stay in it. He booked all his accommodation before he left. Uh, and he posted multiple pictures on Facebook on his trip showing just like huge smile and how happy he was to be on this adventure. Now, um, he arrived in Byron Bay, I think on May 30th, because, um, he went missing within 24 hours and he went missing on May 31st. So I'm guessing he arrived on May 30th. And he was supposed to then, it was the penultimate stop on his trip. So after that, he was going to be there for about a week. And then he was supposed to go to Melbourne and go back to Belgium. And he was really looking forward to adding home and starting university. Now, he is seen on security footage going into a bottle shop. I'm not sure what a bottle shop is. I, is it like, I don't know if it's like the Australian version of a liquor store, but all the articles said a bottle shop. 
around 7 45 p.m and then he goes to a bar called the cheeky monkey where he stays until about 11 p.m and then he's last seen on security footage walking down a street only 15 minutes away from his hostel now he was last heard from uh, just past midnight when he messaged a friend in belgium now um, his phone pinged at 1.42 p.m. off a tower near Byron Beach and Tallow Beach, near Tallow's Ridge. Um, that was 12, more than 12 hours he was, after he was seen at the bar. Now, I looked this up just to see how far it is on Google Maps, and that, that area is about a 25-minute walk from the bar he was at, so not super far away, um, but it pinged more than 12 hours later. Now, that could mean a few things, but I'll get into that later. Um, on Saturday then, so this was Friday, May 31st, so the next day, um, drones and dogs were out searching uh, dense bushland in that area. And, um, sorry, this was not June 1st, this was this Saturday, so that was uh, Saturday, June 14th. Um, and then yesterday, Monday, they focused their search around the Cape Byron Lighthouse. Now, um, the surf lifesaver groups, police dogs, drones, members of the community, they've all been canvassing the area, um, swamp, beach, bushland, town streets, all looking for him. Um the area apparently is very challenging because it has a lot of um, swampland and a lot of dense bushes. It's also um, like it's very popular with tourists, so a lot of people traverse through the streets every single day. But what is also very apparent to me is that no matter how touristic it is, this is seemingly has never happened before. Like the inhabitants are so shocked that this is going on they said you know we have so many tourists each year but they always show up again like this is the first time that we have someone that's missing or at least one of the first times and they're all jumping in and searching for him because they are um they're really shocked that this happened um the hostel called the police about a week after his disappearance to let them know that he, all his belongings were still there and were untouched and they found that very strange um his phone has also not been used after that last ping and his credit cards haven't been used either now his family and investigators have been getting trying really hard to get access to his whatsapp messages because they think that he had a conversation on WhatsApp that might change the whole perspective of this, this investigation. I'm not sure what they mean by that because I think the general consensus for all of them is that he did not walk away of his own life. He was having way like too much fun. He was a happy kid. He was really looking forward to going to university. Um, maybe they think that he was whatsapping with someone that had bad bad intentions i don't know um now whatsapp have been very reluctant to give this information because of privacy reasons but after tail's father he traveled to australia and he made a very emotional appeal saying that he promised his younger brother that he'd bring him home and um it seems like WhatsApp have come out since and said that they will provide this information to the investigators. Um, and that's really all there is. Um, so basically his family don't really expect a good outcome. I think they're obviously hoping for one, but they've said that he is... He always replies to all messages. He's someone who stays in touch with the home front every single day and it's not like him to not respond to anything. So they don't really have like a lot of hope for a good outcome. Um, but they obviously want to know like what happened to him. I hope that the WhatsApp uh, information can shed some more light on this. I will keep you updated in case there is um, an update in this case. But that's it for now. I did see a theory on Reddit um, 
death said maybe he went for a midnight swim and drowned. And some people have said that that's very possible because tourists very often get caught out by how strong the current is in the ocean there. Given that um, it was about a 25-minute walk from his, from the bar, I can't tell. I'm not sure what hostel he was staying in, so I can't see how far it was from the hostel. But he was 15 minutes away from his hostel, so let's assume that it was in a direction of the beach. Then it would have only been about a 10-minute walk from this hostel. So um, it's possible that he decided to go for a swim and drowned and... Mm, the fact that his phone pinged, I mean, a phone pinging could simply be because someone's sending you a text message. So it could be that he decided to go for a swim, put his phone on the shore, and that it's still there, and that's why it pinged. But for as far as I know, they haven't actually found his phone, so don't know. But um, I really, really hope that this case gets solved. I have all faith that it will. I don't know why, because there's not a lot of information in it yet. But I sincerely hope that it will get solved. Um, and I have a feeling that it will. I think that they're really investigating this. So I hope that they will be able to solve it. Um, so I'll move on to the next case. I'm really sorry. I can tell that the lighting's pretty bad. But also, um, I have a cold. So I'm sorry if you can hear that. So the next case I want to talk about is the death of Julie van Espen. So Julie was 23 years old when she died on May 4th of 2019. She was supposed to meet up with friends that day and she um, cycled from her home to Antwerp. Now Belgium is a very big cycling country. Um, it, it, it's full of cycling paths. It's a very common thing to do so it was very normal for her to cycle this route. Um, now three after Three hours after she was supposed to be there, her dad got a text from her friends to say that she never arrived. And immediately, this was flagged as a suspicious disappearance. And um, family, friends, and police started a very large-scale investigation. Now, this was a Saturday. So on Sunday, they received her phone records and they were able to do a more targeted search. They were able to find the last place that her phone pinged, which was somewhere along the, her cycling route. And they were able to search more in that area. Now, in the early afternoon, the hope of finding her alive became much smaller because they found her passport thrown away in a garbage can. They found the wicker basket that was on her bike you know, she had like a basket in, at the front of her bike. Um, they found it tossed away and they also found some of her clothing um, under a bridge that had blood stains on them. Um, now, that same night, police spread video surveillance footage of a man with a backpack. He had been caught on camera throwing the basket away. Now, they were very smart about this because they labeled him a very important witness rather than a suspect so that they wouldn't scare him off and he wouldn't run away. Um, by Monday night, so basically the same day because they, well, the next day, I suppose, they, they released the footage on Sunday night. By Monday night, people had spotted him in a train station boarding a train and so police a few stops further boarded the train as well and were able to arrest him by meeting him on the train. On the same day, on Monday, May 6th, um, Julie's body was unfortunately found in the Albert Canal. Now the suspect, a man named Steve Bacomans, ended up confessing to killing her. And this is where the, the whole thing just becomes infuriating. He said that he was hanging around looking for a girl to rape, and she cycled past him. So he grabbed her, but she put up such a big fight that he had to hit her a few times on the head to silence her, and instead he ended up killing her, but he was never able to rape her because she fought back so hard. Um, on May 12th, over 15,000 people held a silent march in Antwerp in her memory. And on May 18th, 
over 2,000 people attended her funeral. Now, the reason that this case is so maddening is because it shows once again how horrible the justice system is in Belgium. So, the police work in this case was incredible. I mean, it took three days for them to solve this case. But this guy had been convicted of rape before for four years. Four years in prison, which, let's face it, is not long enough for a rape. But he was convicted to four years in prison but he was in the middle of a very lengthy appeals process and was allowed to just walk around freely on the street. And that's always the case in Belgium. People who get convicted either are released, like they get a lengthy sentence and then they're released early because overcrowding in the prisons, or they just never go to prison. And I'm not saying that prisons aren't overcrowded, but there's freaking ways to solve that. Like, give them an ankle bracelet so you can at least monitor them. But that didn't even happen in this case. He was allowed to walk around freely and killed her when it could have been avoided. And it happens so often. I feel like it happens so often in Belgium that people who are not supposed to walk out freely on the street do and then end up hurting someone else when they should have been behind bars all along and it was it was like everyone like my whole facebook nobody that i know knew her personally and yet my whole facebook was just filled with sadness and anger and disbelief over this girl's death and it showed in the fact that 15 people fell 15,000 people uh, marched in her honor in antwerp so yeah, I don't know. Let me guys let me know how it is in your countries whether you have a good justice system or whether it's the same as in Belgium cuz maybe I'm just more infuriated than I should be, but I kind of feel like that system fails us a lot. So, that is all I have. My god, I really hope the lighting doesn't look as bad on the video as it does on camera. Um this was, I know this was not the ideal video, but I just had to fit it in um, with my parents being here. Um, and I hope it was still okay. So, um, thank you as always for watching. I do have a Q&A coming up on Friday, so make sure to leave your questions on the announcement video. And I'll see you then. Bye.